Welcome to another episode of Fully Charged News, uh, and it is exactly as I expected. Uh, the reaction to the government's timid and, let's be frank, not exactly radical proposal that by 2040 we stop making any internal combustion engine cars, the reaction has been absolutely classic. It's been a, you know, a, a torrent of, of misinformation, lies and denialist spin. It's not fair. We were encouraged to buy diesel. Now, that is a very common complaint, and I've heard it many times. It's a very understandable wail of despair. But, but, the fact that it's unfair does not stop diesel fumes from being harmful. People used to say tobacco was good for you, and then we found out that it wasn't. And we all said, it's not fair. Now we have to go outside to smoke a cigarette. They told us asbestos was safe, that DDT was completely safe. They told us that thalidomide was a perfectly reasonable solution to morning sickness. But then we discovered that those things were not completely sensible or safe. They were very dangerous, so we stopped using them. A little bit like diesel and petrol. So what we're going to witness over the next few years are increasingly desperate attempts by the powers that be, the enormous web of interconnected uh, organisations, governments, uh, uh, big corporations, the oil industry, uh, some large automakers and political reactionaries who benefit from them. It's very important to remember that these lobbying groups are the same actual people, not just like the same type of groups or the same type of people, the same actual individuals who lobbied against uh, the introduction of unleaded petrol, uh, the introduction of catalytic converters, the ban on asbestos. They also worked for the tobacco lobbying groups uh, many years ago. The same people are now working for the fossil fuel industry. You know, climate change denial. They're really working hard. Electric cars are worse than petrol petrol and diesel. You're going to hear it again and again and again. I'm just here to suggest to you that that is not the case. As Zapfan Zapfan, who is a commentator on the Fully Charged YouTube channel, uh, he recently commented, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. He added, EVs have reached the third stage now. Yes, I think that's a very clever observation. And while many of you have been incredibly kind and supportive about what we're trying to do on this channel, it's important to bear in mind that Fully Charged is really a tiny little squeaky mouse in the corner of a very big room full of some very big, powerful, noisy elephants that are bellowing at full bore 24-7. So if you see some of these stories about, you know, brake, brake dust being more dangerous than diesel fumes, it's worth kicking up a stink about it. And what better way to follow that plea than by uh, presenting a very negative news story about electric cars. Oh my god! Shock horror! Negative news about electric cars on fully charged! Yes! <laughs> Now, the Chevy Bolt in America has had one or two little teething problems. Uh, it's a, it's a, a bit of an issue in the battery department. Obviously, the problem doesn't affect anyone in the UK because we can't get the Chevy Bolt in the UK because they won't import it. Quite like one. They've got them in Europe. They're allowed to have them. We're not. We're excluded. We're really being done down. We're, America doesn't support us. Trump hates us. But some owners have had a nasty surprise with their Chevy Bolts when they suddenly stopped saying they've run out of range and, and they didn't expect it to. It's apparently a fault in some of the early models where one cell has a failure in the battery pack and the software registers that as a total battery failure and it just stops the car. To give a bit of balance, out of the 10,000 Chevy Bolts that are on the road in the United States, this has affected around 80 cars. So it's not exactly catastrophic. And General Motors has replaced the battery packs, and as soon as they do that, it seems to be absolutely fine. So I think it's important to point out that this isn't a problem with the actual physical batteries themselves. It's a software problem. It's the way the software reads the battery health, and it's got some glitch in it, and they've rewritten, the, they've patched it, they've updated the software. But of course, probably because it's GM, you probably have to take it into a garage and have a man plug in a thing with a laptop and go blah, 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 like that. With a Tesla, it just happens over the air. Not saying that Tesla are better, just pointing out, you know, that car industry needs to move on a little bit more rapidly than might be the case at the moment. Talking of old batteries, Renault have just announced the installation of a battery backup pack at rapid charge sites in Germany and Holland. Now they're using old batteries from the uh, original Renault Fluence which was, I have to say, not one of my favourite electric cars I've ever driven. There is a, re there is a review of it if you can be bothered to scroll back through literally hundreds of episodes of Fully Charged. I did drive the Renault Fluence a long time ago. Um, but anyway, so they're using the old battery packs in this big block of uh, batteries next to the, the charger. Uh, which, and these batteries will be trickle charged round the clock by the, the mains feed from the grid. Uh, and then they can supply plenty of power for the rapid charger when it's called upon. 
Now, the main thing holding back the rapid expansion of such a network is quite simply the fact that the batteries are lasting longer than the manufacturers or automotive journalists or even Jeremy Clarkson uh, predicted. They're lasting way, way longer than anyone thought. So they don't have, no, there's no manufacturers with like massive stockpiles of old batteries waiting to be used. They just don't have them yet. So the only batteries that are coming out are one or two specific models or batteries that come out of cars that have been wrecked in crashes. So there's not, a, there's not a big supply, but of course there will be, eventually there will be. Uh, Nissan have plans to introduce home battery packs using old uh, Nissan Leaf batteries, but they simply don't have enough yet to make it viable. I've been waiting ever since they launched the idea, which has got to be two years ago, and we filmed the launch of it and we saw these wonderful design battery packs that you put in your house. They haven't actually released any because they haven't got enough batteries to make them. There's also a company called PowerVolt uh, who are using old Renault batteries. I can't keep saying Renault, it's just too French, isn't it? There's also a <laughs> company called PowerVolt who are using old Renault batteries uh, to do the same thing, to make household battery packs. And we're going to do a program about to PowerVolt soon because I'm uh, very interested because they are actually in sort of, they've put about 80 in different houses in the UK. And, uh, you know, clearly this stuff is going to be a really big thing. Using old batteries to power your house is a really sensible idea. I wish I could have done it. I've been waiting for two years for a Nissan one and they just don't have them. Nissan, you know, when you've got one, please, I'll buy one. Actually, no, I've run out of money because I spent it all on a Tesla Powerwall. Don't tell Nissan. Anyway, moving on. Now, talking of big batteries, how does a four megawatt hour battery grab your electrons? Oof. That's how big the batteries are on a couple of new Swedish ferries. Now, these ferries run between Helsingborg in Sweden and Helsingor in the Denmark. Now, it's not a very long route. It's four kilometers between the two, the two docks. Uh, and, and they're sailing across backwards and forwards all day. And they carry 7.4 million passengers a year and 1.7 million cars. I mean, not all at the same time. They're not that big, these ferries, but they are fairly chunky. They're 238 meters long and they weigh 8,414 tons. So they're proper big, chunky ferries. They're not a rowing boat that you can just about get a car on. That's all I'm saying. And the ferries can charge at either end of the route. And uh, while the cars are unloading, they're, all, they're plugged in and charging. And then all the new cars come on and all the people come on and the dogs and the bicycles, because there's lots of bicycles in Helsingor and, Hel and Helsingborg. Well, now, there's lots of speculation about how fast you can charge such enormous... A four megawatt hour battery! You know, how long is that going to do? If I plug that in here into my seven kilowatt charger that I use to charge the Tesla... I reckon it would take about a year to charge it. So they've got to have something fairly chunky and there's still a lot of speculation about exactly how they're going to do it. Clearly, they're going to put big batteries on the dock side so that they can dump huge amounts of electricity in one time while those batteries on the docks are charging 24 hours a day. I would imagine that's how they're going to do it. But the designs for the actual charging system, you know, how do you plug in a ship? It's going to be quite a big plug and it's a great big thing. What happens if the sea's rocking and it's going up and down? I don't know. It's all very exciting. I'm desperate to go and see it, but it's a bit of a drive to go to Helsingor in the Denmark. It's also worth mentioning that both Sweden and Denmark have very clean electricity. They're really lucky. I mean, Denmark is mostly wind. They, they, they're really good at wind. As we saw when we went to see those big wind turbines that were put in there by Dong, which stands for Danish Oil and Natural Gas. OK, I know there's been lots of Dong jokes, and I really appreciate them. Thank you. Now, a couple of really bonkers lithium stories. There's nothing I like more than a really bonkers lithium story. It turns out that volcanoes are a potential source of lithium. Who'd have thunk it? And not active volcanoes. No, not ones that are actually going <laughs> like that. No, ones that have been dormant for a few million years and have turned into lakes. At the moment, the biggest deposits of lithium are in Australia and Chile. But scientists at Stanford University in California have developed a system for measuring the levels of lithium in old lake sediments uh, that were once massive supervolcanoes when men and dinosaurs lived side by side 6,000 years ago. I'm just saying that not to alienate any uh, religious fundamentalists. And to appease the oil lobby, here's an even more bonkers lithium idea. Lithium from oil. What the what? Yes, petrolithium is being developed by a company called MGX Minerals, and they extract it from petroleum brine. Ooh, imagine accidentally stepping in a puddle of petroleum brine. 
Now, the materials that are currently considered waste from, by the refining industry have been found to contain large amounts of lithium. We've been chucking it away. Literally, they just throw it away. I, I don't know where. Landfill, uh, dustbins out the back of the shed. I don't know, somewhere. Anyway, they've been throwing away, but MGX Minerals have stated petrolithium is ever-present in the wastewater from oil and natural gas production. This is a source of lithium we've never even considered, and it's a massive source because of all the oil and gas produced, all the wells we frack, and even Canada's huge oil sands industry. So there we go. Lovely. The lithium in my green car comes from the Canadian tar sands. I'm just writing a headline for the Daily Mail to use at some future point. Anyway, the search is on for alternative uh, sources of lithium as demand is rising at an incredible rate. Even though lithium only makes up 2% of the battery's content, of the battery's mass, we're now making so many batteries that we do, as uh, the wonderful Scylla Black would have said, need a Laura Laura lithium. <coughs> we need a Laura Laura lithium for now because... Chemical engineers at uh, the University of Sydney in Australia and Nanyang Technological University in Singapore have developed a solution for recharging zinc air batteries that could see them applied uh, to devices in place of lithium ion batteries. Now, OK, I've been hearing about zinc air and aluminium air batteries for the last five years and have yet to see anything that could be considered a commercially viable product. But this is good news. According to the researchers, zinc air batteries can store five times more energy than lithium iron. So five times more energy dense. They are safer, they're under more environmentally friendly and are made of really, really common materials that we find on Earth. So that is nice. Now, enormous amounts of research is going into developing new ways of storing electricity. It is rapidly becoming the most important part of the new energy matrix. Mm -hmm. At the moment, lithium iron definitely leads the field, there's no question, but I think even I will live long enough to see the commercialisation of newer, cheaper, higher density batteries. And if that wasn't enough, it is 2017, right, isn't it? I'm just checking, because the Chinese government set a target for installing 105 gigawatts of solar by the year 2020, in three years' time. Well, they've already passed that. And their current total now, today, is 112 gigawatts. 112 gigawatts of solar. And they've installed 35.4 gigawatts of solar this year, and they expect to install another 20 by the end of the year. To put this in perspective, the UK has a current total of 13.3 gigawatts of solar. Anyway, that's all. I just want to say very quickly at the end, as people have asked me to do it at the end rather than the beginning, a very big special thank you to some $10 a month or more Patreon supporters. Oh my Lord, this would never have got to where we are without you. And we, now we've passed 200,000 subscribers and we're getting like millions of views. It is amazing. I really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, so here's some wonderful people. John Paul Breen, Greg Lukosek, Ian Morton, Mike Widura, William Woodford, Benjamin Foden and Kiri Birch. So thanks very much for all your support. It's, it's really appreciated. There's a lot of other names we're going to read out in future news episodes. Don't worry, I'll get round to it eventually. It's not very well managed, but you know, I get there in the end. Uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Have a look at the Patreon link that's below this video. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.